Whatever's on my mind. All right, well, so this is my first show at Blackfish Gallery, and it's entitled Pressed. Um, the title refers to the pressed flower images, the repeated circular images in much of the work. Um, although I must say that they don't, um, those images aren't always, they aren't supposed to be interpreted strictly as flowers. It's just one of the many layers of meaning in the work. These two pieces on the wall here are some of the later pieces I did in this series. They um, are quite distilled and they, I think they're some of the best um, examples of one of the themes that I explore, which is the theme of duality. Um, and in the case of these paintings, or these are actually more like drawings, um, I represent two sides of a kind of dualistic system with the um, realistic imagery combined with the more abstract imagery. So these are, these are still lifes, but they're pretty, um, you know, unusual still lifes in that they combine both drawing and, and another media, painting or, or printing, and they um, have two, you know, two different realities, both abstract and, um, and three-dimensional or realistic. They're mixed media mostly. I, I use a combination of graphite for the, the drawn elements, acrylic paint, and um, stamp pad, ink stamps. All of the, all of the round um, forms are created with a single rubber stamp that I uh, use with a variety of different inks. And um, the inks have a kind of watercolor quality, so when I first apply them, I'm able to wet into them and create some of these um, essentially water watercolor effects. And the stamp that I use is uh, the image of a serpent. And it's actually from a child's art kit. Um, it's a very humble little piece of uh, equipment. Um, but I really like that serpent image and I like being able to transform it into these kind of transcendent symbols. Um, the serpent has a kind of dualistic meaning. Mm -hmm. Well, you can see them here when they're, I see. right? But they're all in these small images. So you've used that in just about all of these, uh, for the patterns, uh, the flower patterns? Yes. I see. So in this piece, which is titled Abacus, um, you know, the image really no longer holds that flower sim symbolism as much. Um, this feels to me more about counting and, and ordering, and hence the title. Mm -hmm. okay. And the other, um, the other, you know, of course the round image also is kind of mandala-like. Um, and I think it's fun to think of a mandala created with all these little snake images. So that was one of the things I was playing with. It looks like you have some, uh, uh, what looks like a, a Arabic kind of writing. Mm -hmm. That's true. Is that on purpose or did you? Yeah, I mean, the Arabic quality, maybe not so much. I've been really interested in calligraphy and just, uh, I guess I've studied in a very informal way, but just from, in a visual way, a lot of different languages, uh, Persian and um, Chinese and those kind of things. And they've always really appealed to me. So somehow, um, actually in these three that you're looking at right now, I was thinking about ideas of the relationship between writing and art. So that's when that writing uh, first started to appear in the pieces, and it's a it's a made up it's a made up language just based on my visual memory of mm -hmm. of other alphabets. This one fits more neatly into the kind of the series because it has that circular image of, uh, as well, and I call this one "Reason Imposing Itself on Feeling" because one of the primarily primary dualistic kind of ideas that I'm dealing with is the, is the tension between reason and feeling or you know action and understanding or mind and body essentially I mean that's that was kind of the beginning of my study of dualism so um, this is named in its honor and then this is a more traditional still life um, that was was a precursor actually. It was one of the earlier pieces before I really established the full theme going in this in this um, body of work. But it uses similar painting techniques. Actually, this is the earliest piece in the series. So I had the element of the circle there, but um, 
it took me a while to kind of integrate everything in. So this was more of a diagrammatic piece that I began with. And this is, uh, also has elements of collage in it. Okay, go ahead. And in this piece over here, the, I do have the stamping as well, but it's largely obscured behind this painted field. But it, it brought, I guess it was the first that brought in these vases that I use in the um, subsequent pieces. And I think the idea of combining the flat plant with the dimensional vessel came out of that piece. I'm going to show a few images from my series entitled Evolution. Whoops, something just fell out. Okay. Um, these are etchings with collage. And um, the button images, if you can see those, are the etching part. And the other part of the image is collage from a, a book that I found in Scotland um, that was published something like in, the, in 1900 or the late 1800s with these fantastic images of organic shapes and the idea of, of evolution. And um, somehow the buttons and these evolutionary images seem to go together. And I'll show you one more. So at this point, the evolution has gotten as far as an actual creature who's very interested in the buttons. Are you still evolving? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I hope to continue to evolve for a long time. Okay.